May the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all his angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. He will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. The righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to visit you? The king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least of these sisters and brothers of mine, you have done for me. Then he will say to those on the left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you never gave me any food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't make me welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing sick and in prison, and you did not care for me. They will answer and say, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or naked, sick or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did not do for me. These will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sister Verna, Ho Verna Hollyhead, a good shepherd sister from Australia and scripture scholar, is a wonderful reflection on today's Gospel, Matthew 25. I will get that put onto our website and leave some copies uh, for you over the week. Some wonderful questions. But let me begin by just giving the context for today's Gospel. This feast is a re relatively recent feast. We don't think much or refer much more correctly to kings and queens anymore as we mature uh, in our own countries, even though I think Queen Elizabeth II, our head of state, is the most wonderful Christian leader, probably one of the greatest leaders we have had. What's the context for this? This is the last Sunday of the liturgical year. And as you know, this year we have been following the Gospel of Matthew. And this is the last section in Matthew's Gospel before the Passion, Death and Resurrection of Jesus. So this is the last teaching of Jesus to the disciples before his own death. Only later in Matthew's Gospel does the Great Commission come in chapter 28, that is to baptise all nations which are represented here. 
some are trying to pull uh, from these nations. <laughs> but there is room for everybody and that's what I have to learn. The goats and the sheep are like weeds and wheat. We've heard those images, haven't we, before, growing up together. They're like the dragnet full of fish of all kinds. They're like the wise maidens and the unwise maidens with their lamps ready for the bridegroom. And these are images of Matthew's community coming to terms with what it means to be a mixed community in Christ, of Jewish Christians, of Gentile Christians, of holding on to tradition and letting go what no longer serves. But the surprise of the parable is the surprise of everyone there, those on the right and those on the left. And both of them ask this question of surprise. Lord, when did we see you? When did we see you? For the face of Jesus is hidden, is it not? And some of us have a great ability to hide it even more. The face of Jesus, we are told in the Gospel and by Pope Francis, is obscured in the vulnerable and the poor. And Jesus identifies himself with the least of the brothers and sisters. I have an aunt and uncle in Nelson in Stoke Parish, dad's younger sister and husband, Anna and Bill Watts. And they always liked this gospel because they said it was never clear to them whether the goats were any goats or billy goats. <laughs> Remember that piece of useless information from my seminary days. Alan Hawkgren says this. It's a very powerful little piece on this gospel. So gone is the view that the only way we can serve Christ or God is a prior commitment to Him. The old argument that one must be religious in order to be moral, and so therefore religious faith becomes only instrumental to ethics or morality, goes by the board. The down-to-earth service of the person in need without any sense of religious obligation or motivation, that is service to Christ Jesus. Down-to-earth service, which we may or may not draw from our Catholic faith tradition. And that is why the Second Vatican Council talks a lot about anonymous Christians who have made no definitive commitment to Jesus they may or may not have been baptised, but they are known for their down-to-earth service of Christ. That is what the Gospel's talking about. Father Michael Hayes, also in commenting on this Gospel, says to us all, So, in this Sunday morning, where do you find yourself in the story? A very Ignatian thing to do. Do you find yourself, ourselves, with the helpers on the right or the non-helpers on the left? Or are you, are we, part of both groups? I think if we're being honest, all of us are a little bit of both, are we not? For there are times when we help, when we go beyond the call of duty and help with an open heart. And there are times when we are a hindrance to grace, when we are a blockage to grace. Even though there are times, it must be said, when we needed to walk away, and that was the best thing we could do. How powerful was Father Dennis talking about his brother at the bereavement mass saying, the only way he could provide for his family was to leave them, not by being with them. We say, don't we, charity begins at home. And sometimes we need to do that. But the point of the story is, if it only ever remains at home, 
then after a while it ceases to be charity. By focusing on the sheep and the goats, the helpers and the non-helpers though, I think we all miss the point because there are three groups of people in this gospel. There's the helpers and the non-helpers, the sheep and the goats, and there are those who needed help, and they are both sheep and goats, and here today, and part of our own hearts. They were the ones we overlooked. They were the ones Jesus identifies with. And they are also ourselves, for we all belong here, we all belong to the fellowship of the poor. Who are the needy then? I am, and you are, and everybody is. None of us is self-sufficient, for I need your help as much as you need mine. So Jesus is saying very strongly here, the only outsiders are those who refuse to participate, but that does not change the fact that they are one of us. We need each other, whether we're honest to admit it or not, whether we can link into that help or not at this moment. For today I may help you, and tomorrow I may need your help. But as we do our part, I think however small to restore humanity, we take part in the salvation of the world by Jesus Christ our Lord. Let me conclude with just some of Verna, Sister Verna Hollyhead's questions. Are we ready to be a Eucharistic people, broken and consumed by our service and sacrifice for others? Do we recognise how arid the lives of our sisters and brothers can be when they are dried up by a sense of failure or worthlessness? Are we able to offer them the drink of compassion and affirmation and welcome for their personal work? And what about the homeless? Do we see them at all as icons of our own inner homelessness, our own sense of not belonging, of searching for something or someone more. We know exposure and nakedness are cruel indignities for the human. But life can be cold not only when we're exposed to the snowstorms of Upper State New York at the moment, or social impoverishment, have we stripped others naked by malicious gossip or failures in confidentiality? Do we leave our relationships in the bitter cold through overt or subtle humiliation rather than clothing them with the warmth of forgiving love? She says we are all prisoners, each in our own way, to the reality that is sin. Some of us may minister with great compassion to those who are physically imprisoned. I think of Les McCaskill, for example, the late Les McCaskill, husband of Jane, who spent years going to the prisons to teach the prisoners to read English. But in everyday life, do we try to lead each other into freedom or lock one another out? The sick are always with us in our families, in our parishes, in hospitals and nursing homes. Do we care for them and visit them? I think we do as a parish. But I also note at times they embarrass us, they frighten us, and they seem, in her words, to be a waste of our time. So perhaps she is right by asking the question, do we fail to recognise them, the sick that is, the prisoners, the needy, as sacraments of our own mortality? I think at times we do. And then again, there are times we don't. Those are the times we are to cultivate. God bless you.